All right, Shalom, Israel, Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachah Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly and incorrectly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Double honors to the elder apostles of Great Millstone, of whom I learned this 100% truth, and who rule very well and oversees the tabernacle of David. Shout out to the head of the men of Israel camp, the Ak Kazakh, whom I teach under here in Greenville, South Carolina. And finally, a quick shout out as well to Achyam and Akwath, which is Hebrew for you brethren and sisters who are diligently and sincerely working out your faith in these last days with fear and trembling toward your salvation. All right, so y'all say Shalom, and that's Hebrew for peace. This is the Ak Alaya, the brother Elijah, and I'm here with a quick, you know, uh, land back in and response to um, the video you see right here up on the screen. Uh, entitled, No Matter What You Are Going Through, The Lord Is Always With You No Matter What. Pray. You know, and this was uploaded. It was a live stream by the Brother Neil uh, a few moments ago. And, you know, and this response is coming to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shai, you know, for the edification of the elect. You know, and when I say the elect, I'm speaking in reference and in regards to the chosen Israelites. And you Israelites being the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. We are the Israelites, according to the Bible, and this exhortation is for you. You know, and as you can see by the title of this video being, we have no plan B. You know, and like I said, this comes from the live stream that I watched from the brother Neil. You know, he was going into basically, no matter what we go through, as the title says, the Lord is always with you no matter what, and pray. You know, and that's something that, you know, through the spirit, as I was watching the, the live stream, the spirit hopped on me, you know, and, you know, reminded me of Second Timothy uh, two and three, as it reads over here, I'll read it. it. Says, "Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach." Right, because no matter what we go through, and we are set up to go through a lot, man. You know that's why we we've been encouraged and you know reminded to endure. You know, and not just endure anything, not just endure for a twenty four hour period, not just endure for a month, a year, two years. No, man, we've been set up to endure through until the end. You know, and we understand that this walk, this journey, as the scriptures call it, the straight gate, that that word straight, meaning, you know, um, a, a rock between a rock and a hard place, basically a situation of difficulty. We understand that we've been set up to endure hardness, right? Let's see if this word hardness got something for us real quick. You know, because we understand the Lord Yahweh Shai, it said that we have to bear our cross, man, as he had to endure and suffer many afflictions. And evils, we, we've been set up to, you know, walk in his footsteps, you know, as the servant is not greater than his Lord. This is Strong's G 2553, and I'll play it. Strong's G 2553. Karkapatheo. 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 And this is where you get that word hardness from, right? It says the outline of biblical usage to suffer. So we've been commanded to endure suffering, you know, it says, uh, endure evils, hardships, troubles to be afflicted, right? And in the brother Neil's video, you know, he was explaining how he's getting over uh, a sickness or an illness or an ailment, and he's fighting through the pain. You know, uh, he mentioned that he was fighting through it even in the live stream, and he was fighting through it yesterday. And you know, Lord knows what else he might be fighting through. You know, uh, you know, I'm gonna continue to pray for the brother as I continue to pray for all the like-minded Achim. And few sincere aquas out there, man. You know, because this is not a, a light thing that we have engaged in that we've been set up and called to to join our Lord Yahweh Shai in. You know, and um, it's not to be taken lightly. However, we are to remember that we have no plan B. So once it gets hard, you know, as we continue to go on, as it begins to get harder and harder, we got to remember that look, we have the Heavenly Father has given us the the um the benefits and the opportunity to be able to pray to him and to be able to call on him and ask him for the things that we have need of, you know, because the Lord knows that we need certain things and certain trials and certain tribulations. He's just testing you to see if you have enough faith to actually, you know, resort to him, to actually go to him and to ask him for assistance, to ask him for more mercy, more faith, more strength, more endurance, more patience. You know, this is literally what the trials are set up for. You know, to once again remind us of how much we need the Heavenly Father. Uh, this is the strongest definition of that word, kakopateo. It says, 
from the same as Strong's G 2552 to undergo hardship, to be afflicted, to endure afflictions, hardness, to suffer trouble. As we understand that we're in these last days to suffer Jacob's trouble, as it's been prophesied, uh, Jeremiah 30 and I was about to say seven. I believe it's seven. Uh, Daniel 12 and one. You know, we understand that Jacob's trouble is truly set up for the two thirds. Ultimately, we understand that we have to go through it as well. The only difference is we're the elect. Abaratiza, you know, Lord willing, we'd be a part of that number. We're going to come out on the other side a lot better than, than the two thirds, man. They're not going to fare too well in these troubles and these afflictions because they don't have faith. They don't have the belief in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. Therefore, they can't pray and resort to Yahweh Bashim Al Shai in the times of trouble. They're going to be caught out there and be destroyed, you know, because they thought they had many different plans and many different options and ways out. And we understand we have no other plans, no other options, no other way out, no plan B. Our only option is to continue forward, to, to keep going, keep pushing towards the mark, you know, awaiting and, and patiently looking for and hastening the coming of, of our Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahweh back to the earth, you know. So let's read this uh, again, Second Timothy 2 and 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shah HaMashiach. And that's not talking about, you know, a soldier as in we taking up arms. That's talking about a soldier as in, you know, we, we have a battle that we have engaged ourselves in, with, which is a spiritual thing, you know. This is a spiritual battle against the flesh, you know, which begins within ourselves. You know, and it, of course, you know, as righteousness begins to multiply in the earth of course it's going to take place physically in the earth as well it's going to affect the physical earth as well but it begins in, in the mind and the spirit man that's truly where this battle is taking place and the elect are, are aware of this and they're resorting to their spiritual power to strengthen to guide to lead to assist to aid them you know and to prepare them for the things that have been set up against them in this life matter of fact um Let's get this in regards to prayer. And I'll go ahead and wrap it up. I don't want to make this too long. Um, all right. Yeah, this is it. But I believe there's another verse that I believe the Spirit is reminding me of. I'm Lord willing, I can get it. But let's read this. Matthew 6 and 8 says, uh, matter of fact, let's read a little bit more into this. All right. Yeah, let's just get straight to the point. I'll read verse seven into verse eight. It says, Matthew six and seven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Right. Going into hypocrisy and how you're not supposed to pray to the Lord because we are commanded to pray. But as a particular way, form and fashion that we are to come before the heavenly father in the name of his son and is to ask for the things according to his will. You know, the Lord is not some damn genie in a bottle where you just rub it whenever you feel like it and get whatever you want. No, the elect know what to pray for. For one, because the Lord Yahweh Shai taught us how to pray and what to ultimately ask for as you continue to read down in the chapter. But for two, the elect aren't going to have the mind of this world to want to continue to prosper in this world, to continue to thrive in this world, because they know that this world is coming to an end. And they know that a greater world awaits, you know, so they're going to be praying according to the spirit. You know, Lord, you know, give me more faith. Lord, you know, uh, put me in a, 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 a situation to where I'm able to be an aid and a help for our brother. You know, as we, we've been commanded to be brotherly again, you know, as the scriptures commanded us to, you know, Lord, you know, put me in, in a position to where I'll be able to have more patience, you know, put me in a position to where I'll be able to study and grow more, you know, or they're going to be asking for things in the spirit to better equip and prepare them, for, you know, for the future, for the times of he ahead, man. You know, but this is the point, Matthew 6 and 8. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. And that's the point. The Lord already knows we have needs, especially in this ministry, especially in this walk. He He knows as he called us into this ministry, what things awaited us. As the scriptures even say in the Apocrypha, uh, my son, if thou prepared, uh, my son, um, if thou seek to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Loosely paraphrase it. We understand that there are, are troubles and evils and perils, you know, that, that are, are waiting, you know, to, to, to suffer us, you know. But ultimately, it's, it's to build us up, you know, to it's the Lord equipping us, you know, to be better servants of him, 
you know, and to to become more acquainted with his spirit, you know. Uh thought y'all watching me on show. I think the verse is finally coming to me. Um uh Baba Kasha, please bear me one moment, one quick moment. Um Uh, oh yeah, this is it. What are y'all watching y'all shy? Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh shy. All right, let's go to the book of Jeremiah and we'll end it with this. You know, because ultimately with us understanding we have no plan B. When we trust in our plan A, when we obey the Heavenly Father's will and to, as the scriptures even say, um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower strong tower the righteous runneth into it and is safe we understand that those that resort to yahweh bashim yahweh and trust in his promise and trust in his word and they call upon him when they need him guess what the lord is always going to be there for them we don't need a plan b you know we have to trust in our plan a and execute our plan a uh you know with precision you know the lord wants you to uh like like i heard a few weeks ago um, you got to walk in your purpose on purpose. You know, I can't, hey, I don't want to be lying up here. I'm not sure exactly where I heard that, but you know, it was a beautiful saying. You got to walk in your purpose on purpose, man. You know, that's who the Lord is, is seeking for to serve him within these last days, you know? Uh, but let's read this Jeremiah 65. Oh, wait, I said Jeremiah 65. I mean, Isaiah 65. And... Let's get verse 24. All right. Uh, All right, yeah, let's just get straight to the point. All right, so this is Isaiah 65 and verse 24. It says, And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. All right, let's read this in the NLT, the New Living Translation. It says, Isaiah 65 and 24. I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. So look, this is the heavenly power that we've been called to 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 remember and called to serve and righteousness. And he said, look, not only does he already know our needs, but as we begin to even call upon him and pray to him, he's going to go ahead and answer the prayers of the righteous. Those that are diligently and sincerely working out their faith within these last days. The Heavenly Father knows, you know, who the elect are, you know, and once again, those of us that resort to him and, and these coming evils and these coming coming perils and tribulous times, the Lord is always already prepared to give you uh, to reward your request before you even ask it. While you're even still speaking, you know, within faith and believing that you're going to receive it, the Lord already has the resolution pre prepared. He already has the ending set up. You know, and it's for our, our better, you know, but, you know, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end it. You know, Abaratah Zah, Lord willing, this is edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Till next time, Achyam and Akwath, I'm going to end it by saying Shalom, and by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechaha, Quadash, Wa Abad, Wa, Dead to America. Shalom.